Now let's get into a little Q&A. Ah, that's my best part. Yes, Simon Dixon does live in Twitter spaces. That guy is there constantly. Uh, this is a good question by Tim. Uh, Dan, can you tell a bit on, on, on how we should navigate crypto if and when 99% of crypto has become securities? What will be a good hold then? And remember, securities are not as evil as people make them out to be. Securities are equities. Equities are stocks. Those are all securities. They're registered and they're overseen by the SEC. Uh, Masterworks, which I talk about, is they're all securities. And let's just say, for example, everything besides Bitcoin becomes a security. Is that the end of crypto? No. It just means that a lot of these projects, they're going to have to go before the SEC and go, okay, we'll register. All right, now we're going to pay a fine. You know, this already happened. I don't know if you guys remember this. I know Beardy does. If he's if he's here, it's kind of late. He might be working. But, uh, I mean, this has happened before. And this is a story, you know, on EOS. This is back in 2019. They settled with the SEC because they said, okay, you know, the ICO was a security. You got us, right? And they paid $24 million, but they raised $4.1 billion. So again, I'm like, is that the worst thing that could possibly happen? So now it's going to be a big pain for the exchanges, right? Because they're going to have to register it as you know, a security platform. And of course, all the, all the different crypto projects are going to say, okay, we're, if you want to say, fine, whatever. And that, you know what that means? And I've said this, this will be my 30th time saying, I, I think. But if you've got a crypto project that is not well, uh, doesn't have a lot of funds within it to actually uh, talk and deal with the SEC and the lawyers and, and the different hoopla that has to go through it, well, they're going to fall by the wayside. How many crypto products do we possibly need? Let's be honest. We have over 5,000, I think now. And uh, of course, we talk about most are worthless. So what will happen is that uh, those crypto projects will go away. Most will just die and no one will even know. It's uh, That'll be that. But the ones that uh, don't make it are on the cusp. Like I said before, the bigger crypto projects that uh, you know are flush with cash and and didn't go ahead and spend it on, <laughs> on an arena for a name or Super Bowl commercials, just saying. Uh, those are the ones that will say, okay, we're going to absorb you just like how uh, Facebook, now called Meta, absorbed tons and tons of businesses and just started to acquire everything. And then you're going to see a consolidation. Sounds a little scary, but it is probably what will happen. And then, of course, they'll also absorb all those developers, which are like gold these days. And then before you know it, uh, we'll have a consolidation of probably the top, I don't know, 30, 40 crypto projects that need to be here. So, I mean, it's going to be painful, let's be honest. But uh, is it going to be the end of crypto? Probably not. And that's it. So good question. All right. So Wine says, does that mean each token would have to be set up as a business with a CEO with a label as securities? I don't know the actual structure. I've never brought a, a company public. But uh, if that is the case, then that is the case. But I mean, right now, I mean, how many... How many crypto products have a figurehead or have a business structure in the same way that you would see like any organization, right? There's somebody at the top who could be a figurehead or uh, a CFO or somebody who is like uh, uh, the chief technical officer. There's a lot of those. And then of course, HR. And there's just, if you think about like, like the top 20 different crypto projects, how many actually have the structure just like that? And I got to ask you the question then is what are we doing here? I mean, as far as like like with crypto, is it just is it just Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley 2.0, uh, with just some some minor decentralization, which really isn't decentralization? Are we trying to, you know, improve things and and do better things? I understand that people are here to make a profit. I got gotcha. you. We're all here for the same thing, but it would be nice to actually you know make the world a little bit better place than just going, hey, I just made enough money to buy another Lambo. It just, I mean, how many how many Lambos do you need? How much stuff do you need? Right. I'm sure right now people are like, you know, I would just settle for for a Burger King value meal these days because I lost everything. I get you. I understand. Ah, uh, great. Meme ordered one. Lucas, to be more specific, they would need to be applied before the token was even created. Oof. Which would be even better. Let's take Lucas. Let's extrapolate that. Wouldn't that be fantastic? They'd have to they'd have to go to the SEC. 
and say, this is what we plan to do. And the SEC can say, okay, well, you're a, you're a security or you're not. Or maybe there's like a board, like, like a triage. Go, okay, this is actually a commodity. So you get, go to the CFTC. Well, this, this is more of a, cur a currency. Go to the OCC and so on and so forth. So they do that beforehand. How many different products would actually make it to market? That's the question. Now, there's, that's a double-edged sword because some different products who have low funding, you know, they're not going to be able to make it. And that part would suck. But how many different scams are out there? I guess it's just one of those things where it's like, you down if you do, you down if you don't. Because, I mean, how many people have gotten burned on rug pulls these, this, in 2022 alone? I want to say it's over $2.8 billion, roughly. Which, in the grand scheme of things, is that, is that everything? No, but it is for somebody. I will tell you that. <sighs> on the flip side, you know, it might be good for, you know, to weed out the things. Unfortunately, here's what we're stuck at. The next question, though, is, Do we really need, like, that's, that's I think, the beauty right now. If, if you're on the fence about, about which products and, and this and, uh, you know, which one's going to make it, Bitcoin so far seems to be a lock as a commodity. Even good old Gary has said, you know, it's pretty much out of our jurisdiction. Where's it going to go? It's going to go to the OCC or the CFTC. And in that situation, Bitcoin will probably flourish. And if that is a situation, again, and they actually have to regulate these exchanges, guess what happens? Bitcoin ETF gets approved and Bitcoin's price goes to the roof. Just saying. Ah. Photocon. Will the banks still be here if cryptocurrency becomes mainstream? You think we will ever be having a decentralized financial system without regulation? I don't think so. I think there has to be, at the very least, audits. But I think since we're so early, these constant audits, and there's this was. Uh, I want to show you guys something, which was not here. Okay, this one right here. It was a good point that was brought up as far as regulation. I want to show this to you. So I tweeted this out because I wanted just to put it here because I know everybody's going to blame me. <laughs> As soon as, as soon as the, the, the regulation comes like crazy hard, which I think is what's coming, it was like, see, Rob said he won regulation. Now he got it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're whipping and putting people in, change who, in, in chains who own Bitcoin. That's not what I wanted. Here's what I wanted. I just wanted some clarity. I just wanted to clarify. Oops, this isn't it either. Let's see. No, 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 that's not it. Yeah, I got I to gotta stop tweeting so much. Let's see. Ah, this is it. Okay, I said this. To be clear, I want a crypto regulation that gives us clarity what a currency commodity security is. Just some guidelines on centralized exchanges are a must after the FTX debacle. Now, unfortunately, the regulation is coming. We'll go way beyond that. So that's all I'm asking for. Just show us your audits. Just show us everything on the up and up. Also, are your co-mingling funds? Also, where are you getting this yield from? Are you really an exchange that is gaining yield from, I don't know, staking and lending out? Or are you just being a big, enormous Ponzi scheme? That's all I want. I don't think that's, that's too much to ask for. And there was a great quote. Ah, Jordan. Uh, let's see. Shark Punch or Johnny Crypto, the usual suspects as usual. But this gentleman, Bernard Butau, I think I said it right. And uh, he is a... Retired engineer. I want to say nuclear. He says, I was listening to a, just let this sink in. I was listening to a Crypto 101 podcast yesterday and the topic of regulation came, come up. Participants were promoting self-regulation to head off heavy-handed government regs. I'm not sure if the crypto industry is mature enough for that. I was like, I got to tell you, it's true. Because right now, everybody's so greedy that they can't. And he said, I worked in the U.S. nuclear industry for 40 years. We were highly regulated, but there was differences in the way individual nuclear power plants were operated. So the industry initiated its own internal monitoring organization. So I think that would be a pretty good leeway or a compromise. Okay, give us, give us a little bit of clarity. You know, here's some audits. But the best exchanges will be the ones that that will have, just like CZ talked about, you know, will make everything a little bit more transparent. And we'll have these uh, uh, audits or uh, Merkle trees to where everybody can see you know, what is actually on the platform. I think it, it goes far, but not far enough. We'd also like to see like, not just the profits, but the liabilities as well. So 
he says that I go, that makes sense. And then here again, talking for somebody who's got, uh, some knowledge. It was called the Institute for Nuclear Power Operations. It was compromised on members from the best managed plants across the USA. Why can't we do that with exchanges? Get the best ones in exchanges and start to make some, some self-regulating rules. Regulator assessments were conducted using members, INPL members, and members from other plants other than the plant being assessed. These teams spent three weeks assessing how the target plant was conducting business and wrote an assessment to help each plant assess up their game thereby continuously upping all plants' performance. That makes sense. Perhaps a similar morphed approach could be used for self-policing DEXs and, and centralized exchanges to sniff out scams like FTX. Anybody got a problem with that? I think that's sage advice. And uh, uh, I want to say, Bernard, thanks for lending us uh, some of your knowledge moving forward. Thank you. Uh, Marky, legend, what do you think about Cash App? I use it because there's some people that that's all they use is cash app. So I just use it when I need to, but that's about it. I don't really like buy a bunch of my crypto on that. Usually it's just Coinbase right now. CS says, could a decentralized registration, could a decentralized uh, exchange, maybe could a decentralized registration be possible? It sounds counterintuitive. I don't know if that, if we're talking about DEXs, as far as like regulated DEX, it's going to be very tough unless you have everybody who just comes to the table and go, okay, here's one inch and here's Uniswap and here's Pancake Swap and all of them get together and go, this is the industry standards we want to do and go from there. But you can't, you can't KYC and AML your way out of that. That's inevitable as, uh, also. So I'm just talking about the interim, the centralized exchanges. JF says, Rob, do you speak Spanish? Good to know that you have a pool in PR as well as so when Bitcoin hits 100K, you can jump the green screen. So I... My Spanish is uh, terrible, but right now I go to class every day, two hours a day in the mornings, and that's what's been pushing my videos back a little bit. So uh, I think it's, it doesn't matter how old you get, it's imperative that the place that you're at, you make sure that you learn the customs and, and try to communicate with the people as best as possible. Puerto Rico, most people speak English anyhow, but I feel like it is a deficiency that I have. So uh, I want to shore up any kind of weaknesses, and that's one of them. Let's see. Hello, this is pain. <laughs> it is pain. I know people, I got to tell you what's amazing to me is how many people call the bottom. Like, okay, FTX, good. We found it out. We're good. We're out of here. Nothing to see here, folks. And they're like, that's the bottom. I don't think that's the bottom. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, who knows? Xenos, I made the Elijah. That's true. Thank you. Welcome. Moro, how to win the ledger? That's a good question. Uh, it's pretty simple. Like this video you're watching right now. That'd be great. And then there's a tweet, which I linked the here. I'll just put this out here. There's a link in the description. That's that's the actual tweet you have to go to. And all you got to do is you got to like, like, comment, and share the tweet, and I'll uh, draw the winner tomorrow. And if you're having problems with that, let me just put there. There's the link to the tweet to win the, uh, the ledger in the stone book. Okay. Da, da, da. Yes, exactly. Will central banks hold Bitcoin on its balance sheets? We'll see. I think we were doing a pretty good job until, of course, this fraud happened with FTX. But I, I, got, I need to stress a point that there was no fraud in any of the projects themselves. There was no uh, issues with, you know, major hack or, you know, somebody coming out and, you know, Joe Biden saying, hey, we created Bitcoin, fooled you or double spend or something like that. It just, that's not what it is. It was all, again, let's, comes down to people and greed. And that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> Change my heart. Uh, yeah, Yowzer says, if Binance fails, I'm quitting crypto. If Binance fails, we're in some pretty big problems. But that would be something amazing, wouldn't it? Don't rule it out though. So for everybody who's like, I think Binance is safe, I'm gonna leave my crypto there. 
I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about these things called the rules. Uh, a collective groan goes against, grows, comes across the audience. Here's the rules. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. It's all gone. Everything's a scam until it's proven otherwise. This is right below me. Don't leave anything on exchanges. You've done the, your job. You've done your hard work. You used them. You paid them. Now take the crypto off. Don't use leverage. Why are people using leverage? 5,100x. Are you that good of a trader? Are you that awesome? Are you up for your entire lifetime? Chances are no. And then lastly, take profits along the way. That's it. And of course, uh, don't forget, treat a centralized exchange like a filthy public toilet. Get into your business and get out quickly, touching as little as possible. That's from uh, Darth Boomer, which is an excellent, excellent point. All right. <laughs> Jack in the Crack says, can I come visit you for the weekend? Your black one looks so refreshing. This is just a green screen. I'm at my mom's basement. And that's it. However, uh, so everybody knows, next week we'll do another Puerto Rico meetup. I will see you guys at uh, the Smokehouse. Steven, hopefully you're good with that. And uh, I buy the first round as usual. So we'll go from there. And if, if, the, if the market's real bad, we'll all do shots. All right. Rob is a confirmed Fed. Just an agent. Just an agent. Please keep comments courteous. No, no, no. Let them all rip. Gemini set yield to 0%. Well, that's smart. Hmm. Joseph says, hey, Rob, any suggestions for new Cardano uh, ISPOs? Initial stake pool offerings. Uh, Ray ISPO is over now. No. Yeah. I don't, I just, I have a Cardano stake pool. That's about it. Uh, but uh, not really too much there. Let's see. Sorry. Modern Samurai. Honestly, I can't say this is getting worse than it already is. Everyone is down hard for most part. That's a good point. I think mentally people are down. You know what? What's the price today? How are we doing in the exact, our market? Are we above a trillion? I'm just kidding. I know we're not. Uh, that does suck. Well, not too great. So we're down down a point. Uh, we're down 20, 10% for a week for Bitcoin. That's pretty good. It's weird that Binance Coin is down 18%. XRP beat uh, Bitcoin. It's only down 8.9. Dogecoin is only down 4%. Ah, my Cardano is down almost 12. Polygon down 14 for the week. Polka dot, die, Shiba, you knew, fantastic. 41% for Solana, ouchie. 16% for Tron. I got to tell you, Tron still holds out. I think they, uh, they actually are sponsors of Coindesk for some reason. So Tron's doing quite well. Yeah, but good point, Modern Samurai. I can't see it. I just think it's like a slow burn sometimes. You know, we just kind of move sideways. We lose a little bit. And then, of course, we hear another story and then, you know, people are trying to shore up their losses and go, well, you know, there's only one place that's pretty liquid. That's crypto. But again, I mean, how much more can we lose? I don't know. I mean, we all, it's amazing how everybody says, you know, I'm here for the long haul. I'm going to make it. But, you know, once those, once those negative percentages start rolling in, it starts to wear on you again and again and again. So we'll see. It's like, uh, it's like squid game. <sighs> see who can make it. Who's the strongest? Amy, adios. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Any thoughts on Exodus Wallet? Some people like it. I, I haven't had a problem with it. I don't use it, so I can't really to sell too much about it. But uh, nobody's that I've no one has a, a problem with it so far. Does that mean it's awesome? Uh, no. Hmm. Max says, Sam won't be arrested. He'll have some scapegoat that takes the rap. I think he'll be arrested. The question is, how much will, we, will he be indicted? Will he be, will he be charged? And on what kind of charges will they bring against him? And the next question would be, how much jail time do you think he'll, he'll spend? It's very rare for billionaires to spend any kind of time in, uh, in jail. However, Sam's not a billionaire anymore. So, hey, who knows? 
Anthony's got a good question. He says, Hey Rob, is staking dot cosmos near on ledger wallet, hundred percent safe. What if the projects went belly up? Uh, highly unlikely in this case, if they go belly up, staking is out the window. You don't get anything and that's it. So, so the real question is, uh, are we talking about the staking rewards? The staking rewards only work out. And let's be honest, if you were staking Solana, I mean, you were looking at 5.6% yield, not too bad, right? However, you just lost 40% of the value of whatever you, that you got for rewards. So it's like, man, is that a big deal? Uh, but as far as like staking, I don't like to stake outside of wallets uh, besides Ledger. I just don't because uh, it's pretty safe. There's only one exception I have, and that's the Daedalus wallet for Cardano. I just love the wallet. I know people hate it sometimes because it's so slow, but I just, it's just easy to use, and uh, it's like it's running a node. So uh, I'll just do that. But yeah, and also... Come to think of it, if you're uh, trying to figure out like how do I stake with my ledger, it's a great question. There's this website, and uh, it's free. Dan teaches crypto, and if we go to module five, how do I how do I stake cryptos? How do I use the MetaMask wallet? How do I update the firmware on ledger? You click on module five. I'll show you how to use the MetaMask wallet and simple swap, and how to update the firmware for your Nano Ledger. But we'll also talk about how to stake Cardano, how to stake Avalanche and unstake it. How do I stake, unstake Polkadot? How do I stake, unstake Atom? I still have to get that, uh, the near video out. Just, I thought I had that out, I just didn't do it. So yeah, so check that out, I'll show you how to do it. Very simple stuff. Dark Matters, SPF was never a crypto buff. He saw crypto as a get rich scheme, nothing more. Let's have a come to Jesus right now. How many people out there look at crypto and go, this is going to change the world. This is here to help those African, Middle Eastern, uh, you know, parts of Asia countries who they have an issue with uh, having their crypto inflated away or stolen from the government or some other nefarious purposes. And crypto, specifically, we'll say Bitcoin, using as a, as a as a currency. That's why I got into it. How many of you can honestly say that? How many can say that? I like the fact that the numbers go up. Let's be honest. We are here for that. We are here for change the pocketbook. However, I got to tell you, as time has gone on, especially all the things that I've seen right now, it does make a lot more sense just to look for the projects, crypto projects, people that are in the space, they actually just want to do good and haven't screwed up too badly. I think, wouldn't it be great to, you know, get a hold of a project that does both things? I think Bitcoin does that. So with Bitcoin, you can numbers go up. That's awesome. Then also it can be, you know, a store of value for, for those people who get everything inflated away, like say like a Turkey or a Venezuela, whichever you use that same example, or maybe it becomes, you know, uh, the currency, a sovereign currency of a specific nation because everything's being inflated away. Again, I think I could do pretty well. That's why, like, I know some people hate Cardano. I like Cardano. And of course, one of the big ones I really like is that World Mobile token we talked about yesterday, doing good things and appreciating. It's, I, I think you can do both things, right? But there's some projects that are just straight up cash grabs. I just don't get it. And uh, even I fall victim to that too. I'm like, ooh, dollar signs. But in all honesty, is that really the best thing we can possibly do to move things forward? That's the question. Oh, now he's a philosopher. I get you. All right. Best thing to do is buy on Ledger, hold on Ledger Nano. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Biggie says, call me sometime when you have no class. I need all the help I can get. Uh... Lori says, Lori Sykes, you really think there will be regulation that would make legitimate, which the, which the U.S. does not want. That's why Gary Gensler and the gang are doing nothing. The crypto community is doing killing itself. I think, so I think there's a dichotomy here. There's a separation between what is good for the government and what is good for the banks. And people are like, what's the difference? And you got a point. I, got, I give you that one. But in all honesty, um, Let's just go down that path and say, okay, the CBDC gets rolled out, which it's going to be rolled out. We've already we covered this yesterday. There's going to be a digital dollar. 
It's going to be a, a, a 12-week test case. It's going to not use actual digital dollar, but just um, made up, essentially, numbers. And just, they're going to, I think it's, uh, it's Citigroup, MasterCard, and Western, not Western Union, uh, Wells Fargo, and a couple other uh, international banks that are going to be participating in this type of thing. Let's say it does do pretty well, right? That's great. And of course, now that will be that will make the dollar a little bit more stronger because we have a new type of system which makes things a little bit cheaper and well, hopefully cheaper and easier and faster. That's the whole point of this whole thing because Swift system sucks, whatever. That's great. And you can move funds around and it keeps the dollar strong. However, what does that do for taxes? See, the thing that I always look at is there's so much money sloshing around as far as like capital gains, short-term and long-term capital gains. The government doesn't want you sitting on your cash. The government wants you to invest in, in certain things, make a little money, and then pay them back in taxes. That's the whole thing with the Federal Reserve. So like for me, when I look at things, I'm like, do they really want us to do that? No, they want to tax the hell out of us. And of course, the best way to do that is go, hey, here's an opportunity. Invest, 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 invest. And here's an easier way to do it. I think people under... 40 years old are probably probably a little more comfortable as far as the digital age and investing into like, you know, equities on Robin Hood as opposed to like calling up a broker. Hey, Pete, can I get a uh, thousand shares of uh, Dapper Dan or whatever it is? So I just think I look at it, I go, there's too much money sloshing around. I think that'll be it. Now, as far as Gary Gensler and things like that, yeah, he may have got me on that one. That was tough because Gary's got a lot of ties into the Black Rocks and the big banks and things like that. So maybe just that situation. Not for sure. I will say this, lastly, is that if America does away with it, that's cool. But guess what? They leave innovation, a big chunk of innovation, and force it to go overseas. And what happens to that? I don't know if they want to lose this type of innovation to the global economy. I mean, China has no problems with that. Russia has no problems with, with picking it up as well. And uh, I think there's other, other big countries out there that would just love for America to collapse in that one. We'll see. Not for sure. But hopefully they have. I think there's a reason why Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, put together a task force and said, maybe we should take a look at this before things go sideways. Mr. Solis says, Rob, are you using that post-9-11 GI Bill for Spanish classes? No, I'm not. I already used that one up. Uh, but uh, I could have used that actually. Now I can't. Luca says this is not the bottom. I speak French and learn Spanish. Oh, okay. Panda says Coin Bureau made a very good video about ledger history. If you need to be more aware, already about safety. Go check that video out, folks. Why Nano S over Nano X? I always get these two confused. Oops. One's got a lot of space and one doesn't. Here, let me show you. Is this the one with the buttons on the top? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one right here, the Nano S, that's what it was. This doesn't have much storage, so you can put three or four different types of crypto on there. It's just, it's not like you're putting it on there. You just have your private keys and it's, uh, it's, it's cryptographically safe. The other one, the X, you can download, I mean, mass, I mean, 10, 12, 15, I think even up to like 20 different cryptos, uh, the actual applications, and then store things on there. Now you can take things off and it'll still be there and put things back on, on, on an S. That is true. I just don't like screwing around with it. I just want everything right there. Make it simple for me. You know what I really like to do is to, you know, as I'm transferring my crypto on my, almost a daily basis now from the exchanges, because, you know, I buy a dollar cost average, is when it comes back into it, I get to see that. I get to see the numbers go up. I mean, not all the time, but, it, you know, numbers go up a little bit and just go, whew. good thing I took it off there. Now I don't have to worry about it and I can just skate. Very nice. And that's it. Uh, Omar Perez says, how do you know it's not a bottom and not a black swan event? So that's the thing. Omar's got a good point. A lot of people say, well, it was a black swan event for uh, for FTX. And I'm like, yeah, I, I suppose maybe a gray swan event. I mean, do we not see 
an in, in, inevitable collapse of the uh, massive <laughs> yield that was going on and 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 this and the circular nature of of the yield that was being produced and and just those things it doesn't really matter the thing is if it's a black swan event a gray swan event or just the the crypto market going down i believe that we haven't hit bottom because of all the unknowns that are out there plus the fact that we're going to hit a recession next year i'm almost certain of it i could be wrong let me know what you think about that in the comments but our industry is so fragile what's our market cap right now i know it's under 900 billion i want to say it's teetering at 800 yeah 864 billion dollars which is peanuts any little thing that, that happens collapses so like when i talk about contagion the things that i'm talking to you guys about it, the reason why i talk about it so much is i just think that as we start to see more and more things come out we're going to start to see more of the market start to regress and of course the people that were like i'm strong i'm gonna be here forever they're not gonna make it it's okay this isn't for everybody so again just like we we thought about we said oh well you know with three arrows capital uh, that's it or with luna that's it that's you know it was just just do Kwan and his, his crazy stable coins eh. and then of course three arrows capital okay okay that's it three arrows capital there's maybe some contagion looks like it's going to be under control and all of a sudden bing 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 and the dominoes fell and the same things happened with F i mean ftx was the domino from three arrows capital it was just, it, it's all interconnected. And now we're just getting to this six months later. So I'm just thinking to myself, I mean, what else is out there? I, black swan, gray swan, whatever you want to call it, numbers go down. I'll make it that simple. Uh, let's see. Dr. Payne says, if you thought about switching from iTrust cap to a self-directed Roth, and you can put your crypto in a ledger. First of all, I've looked into a self-directed Roth. And uh, people say, ah, oh, it's very simple. It's very easy. It's not as easy as uh, one might think. Uh, first of all, as I understand it, you have to have a corporate structure to do those types of things. Second of all, you have to file up a lot of different paperwork that you want to do. And of course, you can do all these things and, 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 and go for it. Go right ahead. I'm just not going to do it, period. I know people say, well, Rob, the ethos, not your keys, not your crypto. Yes, I understand. However, <clears throat> for everything, there is risk. And for me personally, if I lose, because I've been using I've been using iTrust for two years now. So if I lose the seven thousand dollars that I put in there every year, because that's that's the maximum I can put as, as an American citizen, and that's even through a backdoor Roth IRA, mind you. Uh, and now that fourteen thousand I put in is actually worth less. I think it's like it's worth like seventy three hundred dollars now because of the things that have gone down. I'm just like. I'll be okay. And that's it. There's no fees. There's no, I mean, there's not, there's no fees. Excuse me. There's no monthly fees. There is transaction fees and that's how they make their money. So that's about it. But if someone's got another option for me and said, no, Rob, there's a self-directed Roth IRA and you can do it right now. And it's super simple. Show me. Let's see. <laughs> Rob Smith goes, I learned to speak English easily despite having no knowledge of any other language. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, where else are we? <laughs> Gallagher says, this is a pretty good one. I got a great idea. Why not replace the Fed with a smart contract? So no human intervention can be. A... <laughs> That's pretty good. That would be good. Hopefully nobody hacks it. Uh Gary Johnson's got a good point. The bottom one, you realize that the value supply is not being affected, just buying and selling to each other. Yeah. The real question is, though, is, is, is the people that have things in the background and decide, you know what? I think we're going to go really, really down farther when they started selling. Who knows? I mean, look, Gary, I'll just tell you this, man. I mean, how many people said June was the bottom and they, sold, they said it forever? That's the thing. <laughs> Roger Morris, crypto is a laughing stock. He's not wrong. I will tell you this. Roger's got a good point. Even my brother texts me. He's like, hey, what's up with your stupid crypto? I was like, oh, good one. And, uh, you know, right now it is. You, know, you have to you have to take the shelling. And uh, good luck at uh, Thanksgiving for everybody going there to talk to your family when you red-pilled them. 
uh, last year. Oh, it's going to suck for you. That's just how it goes. And of course, take the lumps, take the hits, and just say, yeah, it's not working out too well. And Roger's got a point. It's a laughing stock. A lot of people are laughing at us. That's okay. He who laughs last laughs best. Does that mean it's going to happen? No idea. Got a pretty good feeling, though. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Yeah. Who needs Binance? I don't. I can't even use it. I use Coinbase. And you know what's funny? Like last year in the bull market, I, I got laughed at for using Coinbase. Like, Rob, you're a moron because the fees and da 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 and it's down. I'm like, well, you know, whatever. However, I, I was using Coinbase and I was using uh, Voyager and Celsius. So who's laughing now? Yeah. That's why we self-custody, right? <laughs> I got a pool and a pond. A pond be good for you. Classic Caddyshack comments. What's your view for the future? As far as like in medicine or like crypto? I guess we're just, we'll stick with crypto. With crypto, I think uh, I think... I see a lot of massive pain. I see a lot of regulation that's going to disrupt people. And when I when I hear about the regulation that's coming, it's going to be excessive, I think, because they're going to jump all over it. It's just like it's like the guy that overcompensates and buys a Lambo. We'll say. And uh, he's doing a little bit too much too fast and he shouldn't he just shouldn't need to. And that's what's going to happen with Gary Gensler and and all the people in Congress as they try to protect us from ourselves. And that's going to happen. And uh, we're going to, it's going to suck and people are going to be scared. And then for me, it's just like this. I always said the same thing. Show me the rules so I know the game and I can bend the rules to my whim. Same thing with taxes. I mean, just give me the tax laws and uh, I will play within, within your regime and uh, I will find the loopholes and the things that I need to do. Not the loopholes, but the deductions and things that I need to take to make myself successful. It's no different. So that's, that's what I see for, for the, the near-term future. And then I see, I always see things in, in the four-year blocks. I see a recession next year. I see uh, the regulation really crushing crypto for a while and us going down. I see 2024, a Bitcoin halving in around March. That's, I think, a, that's not, that is a lock. There's going to be a Bitcoin happening in 2024. And in 2025, or maybe in 2026, we're going to see some, some new all-time highs, but I could be wrong. Could take us to 2027. I have no idea. But uh, along those ways, just remember, there's always a, even if we're in a bear market the whole time, which I don't think it's going to happen, but if even there was, there's bear market rallies. And that's why I'm always harping on everybody to take some profits. If you bought Bitcoin, I don't know, at $15,500, and today it's at 16700 Maybe you want to take some profits. And then people say, well, Rob, what about the taxes and the short-term capital? I got you. I understand. I got it. However, if you've been investing for, for quite some time, FIFO, first in, first out, or last one in, last out, whichever way you want to do it. If you're doing those things for over a year and you're gaining those, those percentages, the short-term capital gains roughly would be about 20%. So if you made 1000 bucks. Let me do some quick math. Yeah, okay. You got a thousand dollars. You're gonna pay two hundred bucks to the government. You get to keep eight hundred bucks. Congratulations, you made a profit. And you just go from there. That's it. That's all I'm trying to say. Who is hosting DCA this week? I will give you a hint. It's a guy with two thumbs. This guy. So uh, DCA on Friday will be uh, me, Ben, and James, and uh, we'll do it here. <laughs> you must be my dad, Baron Breslin. Not just most dudes. True. Yeah. Uh, better late than never. Jeff is here. Construction. <laughs> I'm not for sure if that's correct. I will. I will uh, uh, ask my ask my uh, professor mañana if that's true. Es verdad. FTX in español es de caca. Creo que no. Rob loved the show. Do you have any ledger staking advice? I do. It's on this website. It's free. And I think I'm going to pound that on the ground. Dan teaches crypto. Module 5, how do I stay crypto? Check that out. Mm. 
my husband just talked to, right through what you said about it. So we're going to do the meetup next week. I, I don't know what day it is. I got to figure that out. But we'll do it again at Smokehouse. Good stuff. Yeah, BitBoy did a good show. Boy, I got to tell you, people were all ticked off at BitBoy, but uh, now he's uh, on everybody's good side. So look at that. It's amazing what an apology will do. Let's see. Uh, oh, good point. Chris Bruncher. When Genesis liquidates its Grayscale ETH in Bitcoin, could that create more contagion and threaten Grayscale? Is the crypto holding? That's a great question. And again, these are the things that uh, I... It's hard to extrapolate and take a look out, but I just see some more problems like this, what Chris is talking about. Gosh, that's scary. Uh, Cujo says, why did, you, why did you start to buy Chainlink and Algorand again? I've always bought Algorand. And Chainlink, I just felt like uh, it was on overpriced. But as it drops down, it's the same thing I did in 2018. I just felt like, uh, you know, everybody's going to need an Oracle as far as all these projects, you know, all the, all the speculators who, who ran for gold, they're going to need picks and shovels. So all the crypto products are going to need some type of Oracle to pull outside data. And that would be Chainlink. So, yeah. You know where I learned about Chainlink first? Tiki Tawari, I think his name is. Tiki Tawari. Uh, the guy that had like five, five coins of 5 million. That was his number one. And that's it. Richard Hart would have more listeners if it was just less braggadocious. Yeah, perhaps. But I got to tell you, some of the things, a lot of things that Richard Hart does say is correct. So has he been wrong on a bunch of stuff? I mean, I know people love to talk about hacks, but a lot of things about Bitcoin maximum is correct. <laughs> if you can interview SPF right now, would you? What would be the point? Uh, all honestly. Um, I interviewed you know, Alex Mashinsky in Celsius and asked him some straight direct questions about you know, what the platform and what was happening. Lied right to me. So uh, I, to me, the interviews are, are nothing. Uh, I, I think the more important thing is uh, the chapter 11 filings from FTX. That would be what I really would rather <laughs> interview, quite honestly. Uh, Eric says, hey, Rob, did a new backdrop, new place, new angle. No, it's a new, new angle. See, like this is the angle usually. I'm just right here. So I just did this. So yeah, very tough to do with the green screen though. I did it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. This is a good point. I have a feeling that Sam has some dirt on some politicians. That could be. But again, that's uh, hearsay and maybe. But is it... It is interesting. Uh, let's see. Guys, I think I missed a bunch of questions, but uh, holy smokes. Okay. Diesel Kane. Rob is the best followers. I have, it's true. We have the best, uh, we have the best followers and also the most wrenches. So thank you, everybody who's an admin. I appreciate you. And look who's here. Beardy. So I just show up. Rob's mom is one of them. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> no let's see do you like she in long term interrogate rather than interview i'm not an interrogator when jark that's a good question it's a good question dr Payne says rob thanks for answering people's questions i wish we had more back and forth conversations ever thought about host holding some skype meetings with a smaller group of your viewers no but it's a good point. Maybe we could do that at some point. Maybe I could do that like as a like a like as a giveaway. Like, hey, uh, we'll do like ten people. We'll do a Skype thing and just show up on this day, and we'll all talk. Or you can just come to Puerto Rico and meet me. And that's it. Okay, everybody. Uh, that's it. I think we're going way too long. We're at an hour and four minutes, but that was a good one. So again, if you want to win the ledger and the uh, stone book, there's a link in the description. Uh, just like this video, then like, comment, and retweet the, the, the tweet that uh, is in the description. We go from there. And I'll draw the winner manana. But that's it for today. So everybody, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you, especially the admins. Thank you guys so much. Like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Have a good rest of the night.